Hey, hello. So we've seen quite a number of videos of the former Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi being pro-African, championing for African unity. But did you also know that Muammar Gaddafi once envisioned what is currently happening in Palestine, Syria and Lebanon? Well, Mr. Muammar Gaddafi once single-handedly tried to warn all Arab nations to unite or else they'll face what Palestine was facing then. This came to be true while well, in 2011 we saw the Arab revolutions, but it's also happening right now in 2023 in Palestine, Syria and Lebanon. Let's take a look at this warning and see what you can learn from it. We must build a shield that protects us and provides us with economic content that nourishes us. Why did they create Tunisia? Why did they create Libya? Why did they create Algeria? Why did they create Syria? Why? So that this nation would remain paralyzed, unable to unify water, food, labor, and even its thoughts. And why do they want it to remain paralyzed? So that only they can work seriously while we remain paralyzed. This is Tunisian, not Libyan. Where did the word Tunis come from? This is a city's name. But the we are Arabs. Where did the word Libya come from? All of North Africa was called Libya. Only in 1912 did we hear the word Libya. We are not Libyans. Do you call yourself Libyan? No, we are not Libyans, we are Arabs. We don't know where the name Libya came from. Maybe all of Africa was called Libya. Algeria is a city, the city of Algiers. Who created all these shapes and called it Algeria? The colonizers. Who created Maghreb? There is no country called Maghreb. There is Fez, Meknes, Marrakesh, even now in foreign languages they say Marrakesh, Morocco, but they never say Maghreb. This is how we were. Egypt, what does Egypt mean? It means Cairo only. We know only Cairo and Alexandria. In the past, you used to go to Libya, what is now called Libya, without a passport. You used to go to the Hajj without a passport. When the Western colonizers came, then went and gave us our independence, they gave us fake independence. They handed us over to traitors and the friends of colonialists and told them to make passports, make borders, and fight for the borders. Don't let Tunisians go to Libya, don't let Algerians go to Morocco, don't let Egyptians go to Libya, don't let Sudanese and Egyptians meet, so that this nation would remain isolated. My brothers, we should wake up, we are in danger. Today we are celebrating that Tunisia is an independent country. And Algeria, thank God, after this torture, it is an independent country too. And Libya as well. This is true, but we don't guarantee that tomorrow we will be independent or not. We may be enslaved. Because this world does not recognize the truth. You must prove your existence, your power, not the truth. Doesn't Palestine have a right to exist? Aren't the Palestinian people the owners of their land? This is the truth. Do they recognize it? No, they don't recognize it. Who stays in Palestine? The strongest, those who bury Palestine alive, this is what is left. Those with the American phantom. Don't you ask yourselves that these people have the right to decide their fate? This is intuitive. But who applies it? Palestinian people have the right to decide their fate. With force they'll determine their destiny. No one has the right to decide their fate. And this world that deceives you and tells you that it is a civilized world. This world is savage, is a barbaric, backward, degenerate world. It is the one that caused the human disasters. It is the one that led the first world war and the second and the crusades and the punic wars. And it still leads new wars to destroy humanity. Who is the one that killed tens of millions of people in the past wars? This is the world that is far-reaching, this is a backward world. And it is not the people who control it, it is always the deceptive, exploitative, racist, and despicable forces. The European people do not want to fight in Palestine, Libya, nor the French people want to fight Algeria or Tunisia. But the elite that continue to control these people according to the government theory, the theory of forgiveness and exploitation. These elites are very despicable and lead a despicable war against you. And they will not hesitate to destroy you if they find weakness in you, if they find a flaw in you. They will not have mercy on you at all. And the Jews and Christians will not be satisfied with you until you follow their religion. They will not be satisfied with you until you go and surrender. Until you go and recognize Israel. Tell them that we respect you will not work. 
The Jews and Christians will not be satisfied with you until you follow their religion. They continue to control us and they will continue to try to control our destiny and to ridicule those who are good to them. And if you surrender, okay, thank you. But if you resist, this is the only thing that stops them. Resistance. Do not listen to any other words. Only resistance. So that the cooperation between us and them and mutual respect between us and them will be established on the basis of power. If this strong nation and it is able to resist for two hours when it is harmed, then it will sit with us on the negotiating table. And it will set the limits of the expansionists' ambitions. Then cooperation between us and them and a mutual respect will be established. But to establish a cooperation between strong and weak, a respect between strong and weak, between the poor and rich, that is not possible. There is no basis at all. We do not depend on it. How can cooperation between us and Europe be established if we are weak and they are strong? They want our Arab countries to remain a consumer market that consumes what they produce from trash. And they don't want us to be an industrial power so that we do not produce gas, oil, and phosphate, so that they take them to their factories, make it, and sell it to us. They want us to be a consumer market and an area of maneuvering. And when there are international wars, they want to put their hands on this area, so that they can control the Strait of Gibraltar, Bab al-Mandab, the Suez Canal, and the Strait of Hormuz. They fight us in the Jordan River, the Yarmak River, the Orontes River, and in the Litani River. Now these rivers, for your information, are all occupied by the Israeli forces, so that the Arabs cannot benefit from these rivers. Then it will be the turn of the Euphrates and the Tigris, which will be occupied. This nation is in danger. Yes, we cheer, we celebrate, we sing, we dance, but we must resist. Without resistance, there is no future for us. They must find strength in you, they must find power in you. And this won't come if we continue to sing about the independence of Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and others. This affects our unity. Unite immediately. Unity of people shoulder to shoulder. And the possibilities, and the water, and the foods, and the rainwater, and the groundwater, and the sea, and the sun. And all the possibilities must be created and unite day and night before colonization comes to us again. Any other direction is death. It's wasting time and deception. Any direction other than the one, the serious, the immediate, without hesitation, without fear. It is a betrayal of the future of the Arab League and a betrayal of the next generation. The Israelis are now making missiles with a range of 4,000 miles to reach Tunisia and Algeria. The Israelis do not fight only against Palestine, they fight against the Arab League. This is a fight for existence, not a fight for borders. And they are waiting for the day when the Palestinian problem will be solved, so that they will be free to attack the rest of the Arab people. The Palestinians are fighting on your behalf. Support must be provided and mobilize all the possibilities behind the Palestinian Trench. Because the Palestinian Trench is the front line to defend the Arab nation. If this line falls, the Israeli forces will advance to the Arab countries around the Gulf. They want to establish an Israeli empire on the Arab land. When did you hear the story of peace? Betrayal, slander against the masses. What path of peace? It is the path of destruction and slaughter. In Lebanon, in Syria, in Palestine, in Tunisia, in Libya. The path of peace is what enabled the Israeli planes to attack the city of Tunisia. The Palestinians in Tunisia. Now the Palestinians are buried alive and they are alive in Palestine today. This is the path of peace. This is imposed by decadence and the weakness of the Arab determination. When the Arab nation was strong and the Arab nationalism was strong, and the flag of the Arab nationalism that was raised by Gamal Abdel Nasser was strong. There are rich and poor, a ruler and citizen, armed and civilian. From where did this rich come from? From the wealth of the rest of the poor citizens. If there is a rich person, it means that there is a poor person. If there is a poor person in any country, it means that there is a rich person. The rich person is not rich except from the wealth of the poor. Social justice must prevail. Wealth must be distributed to all the inhabitants of the Arab nation. And the petrol of the Arabs is for the Arabs. Tunisia does not have a petrol, Libya has a petrol. The petrol in Libya belongs to Tunisia, Libya, Sudan, and Yemen. There is no protection for the Arab unity. Don't listen to others. Either unity or you become like the Red Indians. 
Do you know the Red Indians? Do you hear the gypsies? Who are separated all over the world. You Arabs, they want to destroy you. This is a challenge if a nation is challenging you. You must challenge this nation. Why? Are you cowards? Don't you have the ability? Don't you have the right to live under the sun and above the earth with generosity? If an American nation is challenging you, you must challenge it. Don't bow your head in front of it. If an European nation is challenging you, you must challenge it. Even if we offer millions more in order to challenge it. Even if there will only be a million free Arabs left, that it is enough. Yes. Go forward. The struggle continues.